And hello, and also welcome back. This is Model Omega, and you're watching Chapter 13 of my Thracia 776 Let's Play. After Leaf led the Liberation Army out of the forest, the stronghold city of Tara stood before him at last. The free city of Tara, with Linoan as its mayor, had always been doing its best to protect against the Empire's evil deeds. However, surrounded by Imperial troops led by Commander Paulus, Tara's situation was looking increasingly grim. Tara had maintained its freedom by promising never to oppose the Empire, but that freedom seemed short-lived now. Huh, <laughs> so it's like a fantasy equivalent of Alderaan, I guess. <laughs> anyway, this chapter is pretty much identical to Nine in a lot of regards. You have a force already defending your escape point, and you just have to get everyone there. Except in this case, there are pretty much infinite reinforcements, so be quick about it. General Rist, how is the situation? We have Tara completely surrounded, Commander Paulus. We are prepared for the full-scale assault. I see. Baldak should be arriving soon with his 8th Legion. Don't push too hard. We mustn't waste our manpower. Of course, sir. Huh, I'm not letting that Baldak take my credit. All troops, prepare to attack. Retreat is not an option. Pound Tara into decimation. The full-scale attack has begun. Well, what do we do, Glade? We're far outnumbered. Our defeat will only be a matter of time. Shall I derange the enemy lines? It should buy us some time. No, that won't do. The enemy is Ballistas. You'll just be a perfect target if you go out alone. The basics of fighting from Dragonback are to run in for a surprise hit, and then immediately retreat. You must never rush, Ada. Yes, brother. I will send out my knights. Will that be enough? All the mercenaries fled. Hmm, what about Prince Shannon? If he is a direct descendant of the sword St. Odo, he must have power far greater than ours. Why does he refuse to help? Oh, him. He apparently has no interest in battles in lower places. Huh, and he spends his time playing with the women, eh? We have no choice. We will have to fight on our own. Be careful. This is only the beginning. The worst is still to come. I know. Prince, that is Tara, beyond the mountain. This isn't good. The Empire's attack seems to have begun. We can't leave the people of Tara to die. We have to get into Tara at once. Only a small portion of our forces have arrived, Lord Leaf. Also, I see ballistas among the enemy lines. It's too dangerous. I know it's dangerous, but we have no choice. Tara's demise will mean our demise as well. Right, August? Yes. If we let Tara fall, we will lose any support the people had for us. If we lose their support as well as our troops, all that is left is our destruction. So, this is a pretty pivotal battle, eh? <laughs> no pressure! Anyhow, now we begin. As I stated earlier, Chapter 13 is very much similar to Chapter 9, in which you have an army that's converging on your escape point, and if they capture it, the chapter obviously is failed and you have to restart, and you start elsewhere on the map and you have to make it there. In this case, the people guarding your escape point are actually competent. Actually, person guarding. You have three Lance Knights and two Bow Knights accompanying Glade, who is a new unit we've just gotten, and they are completely worthless. They are essentially the equivalent of partner units from the Tellius games. You control them, they can get level ups and actually stats, but they're gone after this chapter, so there's really no point in keeping them around. Just give all their weapons to Glade and then just have them form a meat shield around him. Glade himself can easily just stand on the fuck you tile and basically make himself invincible to even the main boss here. He starts with a silver lance and is a duke knight, which is the promoted version of the lance knight, which is what Finn would become if we promoted him. He is... okay. His stats are nothing special. He has an E rank in swords, which means he's useless in any out chapter that is not outdoors. But he does bring a leadership star and has somewhat good stats, better than Fred's for that case. For only being one level above, you, their stats are actually much better. Also, this is the first chapter in which we see Bow Knights, and 
think it actually might be one of two in the entire game they show up. It's kind of weird to suddenly start seeing them now. You'd think they would have happened earlier. But yeah, that army over there looks very threatening. But seriously, if Glade just stands on the throne, he's pretty much invincible. There's no way they're going to get him. And watch out for the Ballista. Again, they hurt. Karen might seem like a bad choice to bring on this chapter because of all the archers and Ballista, but there is one house in which you pretty much need her to come, so you're gonna have to bring her anyways. I don't know if the item that you get from it, I don't remember if it's essential, but you might as well bring her, and I had her use the Wrath Scroll, which honestly I should have done way earlier, like in chapter 10 or something, and when I replay this game again, I'm definitely gonna be doing that. I also brought Salem with me. I didn't really talk about him much in the previous chapter because that was kind of just a funny thing I kind of threw together. I didn't show most of it because, truth be told, like, most of that recording was me going from chest to chest opening stuff. But Salem is a dark magic user, the only one in the game, and the first one ever recruited in the Fire Emblem series. Dark magic in this, in, dark magic in this game is good and also terrible. Yachtsmagan is pretty bad, honestly. It's powerful, it has a nice crit chance, but it's so heavy you're never going to be able to do anything with it. However, if you have the patience to stomach Salem long enough to get an A rank in Dark Magic, which, by the way, means that you're going to have to have him use Yachtsmagan a hundred times because Dark Mages do not gain Dark Magic rank when they promote, you can have him use enemy captured Fenrir tomes. And Fenrir is hands down the best long-range magic in this game. It has a whopping 18 might, and it's surprisingly accurate at 90 hit. Seriously, Fenrir on Salem is just absolutely bananas, and I am, I have achieved it in this uh, recording so far, and I'm going to have a lot of opportunities to show it off. It's going to be really great. It's just a big F you to this game to just be able to unleash its own hell back at it. As for other units, definitely bring Selfina with you. Even if you haven't even trained her at all, you're going to want to bring her. Because she has a special conversation with Glade in this chapter, and it's the only way that you'll receive the Brave Bow, which is the best bow in the game. Now, you could actually probably not do that if you really aren't going to train any bow user, and also don't want to recruit Xavier, because, I mean, even if you do recruit Xavier, he can use B-rank bows. He can be your bowman. For the rest of the game once you get him and you can use the brave bow but if you aren't planning to recruit him or use any bow users yeah i guess you can skip it but even selfina can use it right off the bat since she starts with a b ranking bows and even if she was still base level it actually makes her pretty damn dangerous at least when she's attacking because obviously she can't really do anything on the end turn and here i am just having everyone hand their weapons over to glade and then glade's like you guys are useless just go stand in front of me and they're like, yes, sir, please send us to our deaths. Makes you wonder, you know, are these people even people? Do they understand what the hell they're doing? And yeah, okay, so besides Selfina, well, it doesn't really matter who else you bring. I brought Lephus if I needed to steal anything. But I would also suggest bringing your fastest moving units, knights, cavaliers, etc., etc. Because you want to get to where Glade is as soon as possible. Just so, you know, he doesn't hog all the experience and if all your meat shells get killed and then he'll be forced to defend himself, that wouldn't be very good. Oh boy, these enemy faces are going to take a while. Um, anyone mind if I speed this up a bit? Oh, that's much better. This chapter and the next one have especially long enemy phases. Like... 20 or so units moving at once, probably more in some cases, so I'm probably going to do this for most of the enemy phases, mostly because there's really not a whole lot of interesting stuff going on. It's the player phase that gets the bulk of your attention regardless. Enemy phase is just waiting for reactions. Anywho, more about the chapter itself. As for units that you don't want to bring, Definitely leave Nana out of this chapter. You need her to recruit someone in the next chapter, so make sure you don't bring her in case she gets fatigued or such. You don't really need her for this chapter anyway. Yeah, Charisma would probably help in dealing with these Ballista and such, but they're spread out in a way that you really only have to take care of one at a time, and in the next chapter, you're usually going to have to deal with two at a time, and it ain't a pretty sight. 
If you had Karen use a leg ring, she can probably take out the ballista much safer on the bottom, which again I didn't do and I'm going to do next time and I'm finding so many things out in this game about hindsight, it's starting to make me think like, ugh, oh, I don't know how to really go over it anymore. These Bonites are not too hard to deal with. They're usually weighed down a lot by their bows, so it's not that hard to take them out. Holman can almost one-shot them with Dime Thunder, because they basically have no magic resistance. So, there's something about that. Since I brought a whack load of Wind Tomes back in Chapter 12, I'm basically starting to have units that could use it, use it over their other magic spells. Wind is really, really good, and because it's so light, it's a much safer weapon for Olwen to equip than, say, Dime Thunder, because, because it lowers her speed so much that these Ballista could pretty much take her apart, no problem. I did have her use the Ambush Scroll I got in the last chapter as well, if you notice that right in the front. Like I said, if you're going to use Olwen, definitely give her the Ambush Scroll. She really, really needs it, and is easily the best user of Ambush in the entire game. Also, I think this should be pretty obvious, but don't bring any of the priests with you, like Tina or Safi. They're no help at all in this chapter. The Bow Knights can easily attack them and one-shot them, and Ballista. You know, enough said. Also, Leaf is there doing more thief shenanigans than stealing the enemy's weapons, in this case their bows. It's not like they'll be needing it, but ironically, this actually kind of makes them harder to kill, because now some of my units can't double them because their bows were weighing them down. <laughs> oh, Fire Emblem logic. Hey, have you ever noticed that the animations in Path of Radiance are actually basically 3D versions of the ones from this game and Genealogy of the Holy War? Yeah, Ike's animations are basically the same as Mercenary animations, the Lance Knights are basically the same, the Axe Knights are kind of similar, they have, you know, the same basic thing, swing up and down, but the crit animations are essentially the same when you think about it, basically just swinging the axe a lot, you know? Also, note how the Axe Fighter and the Mercenary crit animations in this game are basically the same as Boyd and Ike's crit animations in Path of Radiance. You know how they both kind of just charge the enemy with their weapon outstretched? Yeah, they're basically the same. Isn't that neat? Oh, as you can see from that bow knight that attacked Karen there, be careful about unit ranges. And also what and what not on this map is passable terrain for mounted units. Probably pretty important to keep that stuff in mind. And isn't that animation also used for Pegasus Knights in Path of Radiance? Just saying. Long range magic and ballistas, except for long iron ballistas, have a maximum range of 10, so if you can count well enough, then you can easily stay out of their range in situations like that. But yeah, you may not know that, but Iron Ballistas in this game have a range of 15. There's really no way to safely approach them. They're... It's not fun. By the way, this is a great map to train Olin if you haven't been able to do so far. You've just gotten her the Ambush Scroll. Once you get to the center area, there's basically infinite reinforcements for a while. You probably don't want to do too much because she's not going to gain much experience, and if you rely too much on the Dime Thunder, she's just going to waste uses of it. But if you can at least get her up to A rank in Thunder, that would be great because Bolting is super useful in the next chapter for taking out Ballista. So keep that in mind. Oh, and I just realized that I actually didn't really talk about Serum as a unit at all, just basically about dark magic. Serum as a magic user is... okay. He's good. I mean, any magic user in this game is really good, except for one exception very late in the game. Serum's stats and growths are kind of 
bad, though. He definitely needs scroll help if you want to make him a regular unit. He does have a lot of utility, though. He starts with C rank and staffs, which is pretty good and allows him to use a great deal of things. If you promote him from a Lopto Mage to a Dark Mage, he gains an extra staff rank, which means that if you can get him up to B staffs beforehand, he can easily use A staffs, which is, well, any unit with A staffs in this game is automatically great. And you can make a pretty good replacement for Safety in that regard, since Safety basically has no combat role whatsoever. Aside from that, Dark Magic, not so great except for Fenrir. However, Salem can use Wind Magic right off the bat, which a lot of magic users, in this, magic users in this game can't, so that's a definite plus for him. I just don't know if the if actually training him to be a worthwhile unit is that worth it. It's up to you, but I do it just so I can show off the things that he can do, in this playthrough at least. And there's not much more to talk about at the moment, so I'm going to speed up this next portion. And we are now fresh out of meat bags. Time for Glade to show off the man he is. Or rather, how insanely broken throne tiles are. By the way, Karen is pretty much the only person that can attack this ballista up here. It's actually completely out of range from your long attacks, aside from long range magic if you decided to use one on it. That's kind of a dick move by the game. And damn. My Karen in this game is awesome, and the crazy thing is, she has freaking 14 strength and 10 defense, and I don't even have stuff like the Nova Scroll or the Dane Scroll at this point in the game. Man, how did I get so lucky with her? She's definitely going to be one of my MVPs. Oh, I just love flying units in Fire Emblem games. I remember one playthrough in Path of Radiance, I had Jill at, like, level... 12 promoted in chapter 15. I used her that much. Like, wow. <laughs> she was maxed out on levels when I was on, like, chapter 23 or something. I had to stop using her, which really ticked me off, because it's like, I have to have a flying unit in every in every chapter, and I didn't use Marsha or Tanif or Har at all, because they always tended to let me down in that game. Well, maybe not hard as much, just... I find he's not super useful in Path of Radiance. Which is kind of funny, because he starts at the exact same level in Radiant Dawn that he did in Path of Radiance. But his stats have all gone up by an extreme amount. It's kind of weird when you think about it. Anyway, as for the rest of the chapter... Once you get all your units around the center and have taken out the boss, just gather the rest of the items from the houses and then enter. The boss himself is not too much of an issue. He has a killer lance, so you might want to be careful about that. Have someone with the Crusader Scroll attack him. You can't capture him because his build is 20, and the killer lance is probably not something you desperately want, but if you can get it somehow, hey, all the power to you. By the way, the next chapter is absolutely filled to the brim with armored units. I mean, seriously. It's almost entirely armored units. And the game knows it. Two of the houses here give you an armor slayer and a hammer. So, I would say stock up on those, but your last opportunity to buy hammers was quite a while ago, so... Make sure you still have some left is what I'm saying. Huh. You notice how none of those units attacked Glade? Yeah, that's something that 
happens with the AI in this game and also in Genology of the Holy War. In Genology, if a unit had zero hit, they just wouldn't attack. And in this game, I'm assuming it's because they either have zero hit or will basically deal no damage at all. Hmm. Probably the no damage one because, again, Throne plus 10 defense, absolutely ludicrous. I will never stop calling it that. I will drive that point into the ground. Yes, you're going to need that hammer, and also the armor slayer in the top left. And I just checked the wiki in the meantime. The house in the bottom left that has a bishop standing on top of it holds a knight's proof. So if you want that, you, you have to have Karen because she's the only one that can reach it. I don't know if maybe there's like a single spot that you can move a foot unit, one unit across on, but I don't know. Just bring Karen and go over there and take that and capture the bishop too while you're at it. That'll be nice. Man, this is a long recording and also a long chapter, but it's nothing compared to the next one. Oh boy. <laughs> that one took me a while. And it's definitely going to take me a while to edit as well. And I think that's probably going to wrap it up about for the first part of this. I'll just speed up ahead until the end, but... Sorry it's taking me so long to make another video, guys, but... I had final exams in university and they absolutely kicked my ass, but I'm done them now. It's Christmas break. I got like three weeks until I have to go back to school. So let's see if I can get some more stuff out. I also have plans to do a top 10 best movies of 2014. And now that I finished the series, I hope to soon be working on a top 10 best episodes of House MD. I hope you'll look forward to that and also to future Fire Emblem videos. Thanks for sticking by if uh, you didn't unsubscribe while I was gone for so long. And maybe I, I, there's something I've kind of been saving for what I want to do for the end of this series that maybe I'll release in the meantime as kind of a please come back kind of gesture. But that's all basically for that. Uh, thanks for watching. This has been Model Omega, and I'll see you later with part two, chapter 13. Thanks for watching.